Welcome to the ejection seat community. Over the last 25 years that women have been flying combat aircraft, the process of getting female flight equipment hasn't been the easiest. Often, a woman is the only one in her unit and doesn't have the ability to learn from those that have gone before her. So we're here today to provide some education on the gear and equipment that exists out there to help you get your mission done. It's our hope that through this video, aviators, both men and women, are aware of the different equipment options, understand the basics of how to use them, and know where to turn for help if necessary. It's imperative for female air crew to have gear that fits and urinary devices that they're comfortable with, confident using, so they can stay hydrated, allowing them to perform at 100%. We're dedicated to making this critical equipment available, and I want every female flyer to know that the Air Force supports them in their mission and in their role as combat mission ready air crew. If you feel alone at times in your squadron or on your base, we're here to let you know that you're not alone. There are women all across the Air Force that are here to support you. Reach out to us through social networks, Air Force mentoring programs, or colleague connections. There's no question that's too silly to ask, Believe me, we've been there, we've done that, we've learned the lesson, and we're here to share it with you and support you and make you successful. Thanks for joining. This video will take you through aircrew flight equipment particulars and flight clothing for female ejection seat aircrew. It is designed to help you understand the multiple equipment options available to ensure better integration for female aircrew in ejection seat aircraft. Here are all the different equipment items this video will walk you through. To ensure that you know all the options and are properly equipped with the right gear for whichever situation your mission finds you in. Historically, there has been a disconnect between supply and customers when it comes to female flight suits. They do exist in green and desert tan. When worn, the female flight suits look identical to the men's, but many women report that the better fit simply looks sharper and more professional, rather than baggy in the shoulders. For ejection seat aircrew, the extended zipper is crucial for use of urinary devices. TO 14 P3 1 112 green coveralls, type 1 and 2, can be found in table 1 4. Mrs. Flight Suits. A slimmer version is marked with an M. Make sure to request a fitting. Your AFE technician will size and fit you accordingly. Make sure you use required size information, chest, hip, and waist, to determine flight suit size. Women's flight suits. TO 14P3-1-112, green coverall type 1 and 2, is in table 1-5. A curvier version is marked with a W. Use the required size information, chest, hip, and height, to determine flight suit size per the TO. Female flight boots. The female boot is narrower and meant to fit a slimmer foot width. Approved flight boots are listed on the Air Force Safe to Fly listing. You may have to search size information on the applicable company website. Make sure you use the required size information to determine flight boot size. A will assist with the Safe to Fly boot listing as needed. Every aircrew requiring an anti-exposure suit will be individually measured and custom fit for their anti-exposure suit. Due to anatomical differences, anti-exposure suits worn by women will have a vertical zipper to allow for successful bladder relief using approved bladder relief devices. If an anti-exposure suit with a vertical zipper is not available, your AFE technicians can modify the exposure suit by either changing the orientation of the zipper or by adding an AMXD port. The most common vest for fighter-bomber aircrew is the Air Ace Survival Vest or the Air Save Survival Vest, and it should be fit to each aircrew member individually. If your vest causes pressure points or any type of discomfort, you should work with your AFE technicians to establish a better fit. Your harness is vital to your survival upon ejection. An improperly fit harness can cause serious injury or death. More likely, however, is that your harness may cause chafing around your neck or thighs, and your life preserver unit may hang forward, putting pressure on the lower portion of your cervical spine. To ensure a proper fit, AFE will ask you to put it on and tighten the straps. The technician will adjust as needed, then you need to verify the fit. Work with your AFE shop to ensure a proper fitting G-suit. Take the time to refit as needed in addition to the mandatory 120-day fit. There are multiple modifications that your AFE technician can make, including shortening the bladder over your stomach, 
They can also modify the legs to ensure a snug fit. Not having a properly fitted G-suit could lead to G-induced loss of consciousness. Fresh up. Unzip flight suit bottom zipper, stand facing the latrine or wherever comfortable to use a piddle pack. Pull the extension tube outward from the spout until it locks. With your feet apart, move clothing aside enough to place the opening of the trough snugly against your body. Travel John, unzip flight suit bottom zipper, stand facing the latrine or wherever you feel comfortable to use a travel john. Place plastic collar firmly on body, high end in front. Urinate directly into the bag, wait until liquid turns to gel, and then dispose of the bag in the trash. Of note, the Travel John does not seal, so bring something in flight to contain the contents. The AMXD Max is a fully automatic, hands-free bladder relief system. Before urinating, connect the hose to the control unit. The air pump will activate and begin to inflate the pad. Allow the system 90 seconds to inflate the pad in order to create a seal. The system is now activated and will automatically drain urine into the collection bag as soon as the air crew begins to urinate. Disconnect the system after use to allow the pad to deflate. Dispose of urine in the toilet or in a piddle pack and clean or replace the collection bag and pad as needed. On a longer fighter sortie, it's going to be important to stay hydrated and be able to go to the bathroom and use a urinary relief device in the jet. So I'm going to talk to you about how I do that today in an F-16. I think the F-16 is a little bit more difficult due to the decline seat, so we're going to go over my techniques and procedures in order to get that done. The first thing I'm going to do is set the autopilot. That'll just give me a little bit more freedom to maneuver inside the jet and hopefully still watch uh, my altitude, my airspeed, and my heading to stay in formation with my flight lead. This is the one that I use uh, most successfully throughout the last 15 years. I will put this part, the aft edge of it, hard against my body so that I can ensure that there's no leakage or spillage from the urine and it all gets in the back. I'll hold on to the front of the bag just like this where my thumb is on the inside and gives me good ability to hold it in place. The next part is I'll just make sure that it's opened up uh, and so that I know the urine is going to go collect in the bag successfully. We're in a trainer right now so my harness is not actually connected to the seat but you'll still have the freedom to maneuver as I'm going to show you in a second. I'm going to push against the rudder pedals and I'm going to lift my butt up off of the seat slightly, maybe about four inches, so that I can get the piddle pack to hang down straight so again, I don't have any kinks in the bag there that are going to block the urine flow. Next, I'm going to unzip my zipper and I'm going to kind of maneuver things out of the way so that I have the ability to put the bag in place. I'm going to move my underwear just to the side so again that I have a nice good seal against my body and the piddle pack. This aft part is going to be what's touching most against my body and this front third is actually going to be free because my finger is going to be holding it in place. Hopefully you can see that I'll get the piddle pack in place. Check that the bag is hanging straight, that there's no kinks and pushing hard against my body where you can probably see a little bit of a gap there between my shorts and the piddle pack. And now I'm going to go to the bathroom in the jet. My airspeed should be set, but sometimes I may have to move my hand over to the right here so that I can make sure my heading uh, and my attitude stay in place as I'm flying formation. Once I'm done, I'm going to give it a second, make sure there's no drippage, uh, and then I'm going to pull the bag out, put it in a resealable plastic bag, zip it up, and then put it back away so that I can go continue on. Kick off the autopilot and begin flying again. Definitely takes a little bit of practice, just with the flight suit and the piddle pack, so I'd recommend you try it over a toilet the first few times, and good luck. I hope you found this video informational, and now have more comfort and confidence about the equipment available for your use to keep you hydrated, comfortable, and in the fight.